Right, you lot, what's going on? Welcome. <laughs> Hey, hello. How's it going? I hope you're all well. I'm going to be really cheeky here, but if you are new around here and you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would help me out massively. We're trying to hit a million subscribers by the end of the year, and it's going to be really close, so any help towards that would be really appreciated. Anyway, also, quickly, we'll get that deal back on the card, so if we hit 40,000 likes on this video, I'll upload another one in the next couple of days. So, Jack Maynard, right, the poor bloke, uh, he's had a pretty rough week. Seven days ago, right, he's on primetime TV, it's all going well, and his social blade's going raj. And then a few days later, some bloke and his forehead have gone through your six-year-old tweets and you sat on your bed doing the YouTube apology side. Now I'm gonna pretty much say what everyone else has already said on this is like, like Everyone makes mistakes and probably says stupid things when they're young And you're definitely not the same person when you're 16 to as you are when you're 23 And it makes it even more right that this Dan Wooten bloke right the guy that exposed them Has got some pretty rank tweets of his own Knacker But some of the criticism he's had to face has just been ridiculous Jack Maynard's I'm a celebrity exit proves Britain's idiot YouTubers are not ready for prime time Says a man who appears to have modelled himself on Adolf Hitler. Now I know you should never try and judge someone based on their appearance, right? That's a scummy thing to do. But this bloke has made the conscious choice to put fan of cricket in his bio. So in my books, he's a, a sex offender. Sorry. Anyway, he also has some interesting tweets of his own. I have nipples. Could you milk me? Hang on again, Michael. Reminders. This man's the idiot, is he? And again, going back to, you know, calling him Adolf Hitler, right? I would never usually attack someone's personal appearance, but he starts this article with the gammon-faced 22-year-old. Like, mate, come on. You look like a Caucasian version of Mr. Potato Head. Like, that was brave of you. Now, this obviously isn't the first time a YouTuber's been attacked by traditional media. If you cast your mind back to last year, where a couple of Wall Street Journal writers took a few PewDiePie clips out of context and branded him a Nazi, even though they had anti-Semitic tweets themselves. Like, these type of articles aren't uncommon, but I can't lie, this one really gets under my skin. Once again then, Britain's idiotic and immature YouTube stars have proved they aren't ready for mainstream fame or primetime TV. Maynard's cringe-inducing fall from grace is just the latest chapter in a litany of vlogger embarrassment. The whole YouTuber phenomenon is a bubble waiting to burst, which I mean is debatable, he could be right. But personally, I feel like I'd be slightly more concerned if I was writing for a newspaper whose operating profits have dropped by 40% in just two years. And what really got his here as he ends it with perhaps it's time the youtubers vlogged off and found a proper job. This is coming from a man who in the past live blogged the TV show Strictly Come Dancing for a living. Dickhead. On the plus side though, right, his video didn't half bang. Like number one trending, a couple of million views in a few days and green numbers all around. Cheap flights to Australia. Now Jack's apology video, right, there's no wrong with it, he comes across well, but it might just be the most typical YouTube apology you've ever seen. Hey, what's up you guys? <sighs> Today's video is going to be the hardest video I've ever had to film. I'm leaving Smosh. Or I guess as of today, I've left Smosh. Oh god. Like, I feel like we've all really got this format nailed down in 2017. Whenever anyone's messed up, right, it's almost as if there's a script that we come back with. Now, I want to draw your attention, right, to a video from a YouTuber I'm a huge fan of called Bobby Burns. And it's all about him breaking down how YouTubers will manipulate their audience to get them on side, right? And I don't think I've seen a more spot-on video this entire year. Here's a list of things that I've come up with to look out for when watching a YouTube video from a YouTuber you really enjoy when they're talking about something that seems very emotional or hard for them to deal with. Number one, the sigh. Avoiding eye contact. Ever have any kind of impact online. Right, okay, what else has been happening? Joe Weller's best mate exposes him. Oh, this video is gonna have a filthy title. Okay, so you might have seen the JJ and Elliot situation. So basically, right, all of Elliot's social media comment sections are filled with snake emojis at the moment. And it's because of this video. Fucking Elliot, I'll jump on Joe's dick any day of the week. Mr. I am Joe's bitch. Mr. I am a legitimate hotspot of a person. I mean, I could go on and I fucking will. Mr. Joe just realized he's got a bit of black in him, so gets dreadlocks. Rough start. So basically in short, right, Elliot texted him and uh, had a bit of a bitch about Joe. Admittedly not his best decision, and then he decided to ring JJ, who recorded the phone call. And I can't lie, it's it's pretty brutal. No matter what happens, I'm always there to support him, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. he has helped me so much. It's just petty little things, like even not, like now, we haven't spoken for so long. So now as you do, when this man sends for you, you make your man watch his video, and put her in a rectangle in the bottom corner. Now, I feel like this won't win me any brownie points here, right? And it's probably not what you want to hear. But personally, 
I feel really sorry for Elliot. Like, this is a full-on witch hunt against him. Like, yeah, he's done a couple of stupid things there. But if you think about it, right, how many times have you thought, like, one of your closest mates was being a knacker, so you've had a bit of a whinge about them? So tell us if I'm chatting shit here. So yeah, it is a little bit snaky, but it's not exactly the least normal thing to do. Anyway, I don't know, that's just what I thought about. But moving on to the rest of the week, getting away from YouTubers making knackers of themselves. One of the weirder things I saw was uh, over on Facebook. Not a surprise. Shop early and save, oh, smiley face. And it's, um... It's a tongue for a quid. What is going on here? Like they're also selling the ability to turn your dog into a blue bottle fly or your fingers into a... Uh... Yo, I don't even know. Or this, for example, and I don't even really quite know what it is, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to blur it. So I'm quite an innocent individual, right? So I thought I'd ask one of my more adventurous friends what their opinion on it was, and I think it even scarred him. Or there was this bloke who I can only describe as, um, King of the Keiths. We got married on a Friday because Saturdays are for the boys. Like, how can you be that divorced on your wedding day? We also had Jacob Sartorius flexing on the timeline this week. Hide your girl, I'm going out for the day. What a dick. While these freckles may look like random dots on your face, they actually map out your astrological sign. Right, hang on, Sandra. So you're telling me that you've genuinely gone and tied light up freckles on your nose. Are oh, great. Tommy Hilfiger thinks model Gigi Hadid could be the key to peace in the Middle East. Right, well firstly that's Alan Pardew. Okay, and then it was Thanksgiving, so Peter took the opportunity to, as usual, make a bit of an arse out of themselves. The best meals are the ones that no one has to die for. Thanksgiving, the, the holiday which was pretty much founded on the deaths of loads of Native Americans. And then obviously Black Friday came along after. Big kickoffs in the US, but uh, in the UK we do it a bit differently. I'm sorry, right, but if you're the person filming that, right, why are you still holding up the phone when the second person doesn't even decide to come in? Okay, can't really miss this out, so Jake Paul's remixed It's Every Day, Bro, and Gucci Mane features on it. It's every day, bro, I said it's every day, bro. Well, we should remix that. Down. To be fair, I do worse for 250k. He then, at the end of the song, tries to do some, like, hypnotization shit about his new album coming out. Right, anyway guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed. I just want to say, right, I made another video on Friday, right? It was another one of those voiceover videos, right? And it hasn't really got too many views, but the comments seem to be quite positive, right? So I'm not too sure if YouTube just didn't push it or if it was something that people didn't really fancy clicking on. So I'm going to leave a link to that in the description or it'll be the end card of this video. If you wouldn't mind going and checking it out and leaving some feedback on it, that would be massively appreciated. I just want to know if, like, they're a good thing to keep going on this channel. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this. If you have, please leave a like. And if you're new around here, feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Yeah.